In this video, I'm going to react to Slap Shoes solving the mystery of NASCAR's ghost track and give my thoughts on yesterday's Cup Series race at Darlington. and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. So first things first, I wanna say a big congratulations to Martin Truex Jr. on taking the win yesterday at Darlington. He was my pick. So I, just, I wanna let you guys know that I, I've picked now two uh, correct winners in this, in this season so far. So I feel pretty good about that. I believe it's now his third win of this season. So he is now the winningest driver of the 2021 NASCAR season. And it was a really dominant win. I think he led something like 250 of the 295 or 293 laps so he just he, he pretty much owned Darlington yesterday but he was only briefly challenged during the uh, the last round uh, green flag pit stops in the uh, last 20 laps but when uh, Carl Larson's uh, tyre started to wear and he started fading it was it was clear there was only going to be one winner yesterday it was a really dominant performance from uh, Martin he won I believe both uh, of the first two stages and like he took the lead in like lap 22. So pretty much from lap 22 up until almost the end of the race, well, the end of the race, you know, he was just in cruise control pretty much. Ironically, the driver that uh, he took the, uh, that Martin took the lead from was uh, last week's winner, Kyle Busch. So I'm thinking that maybe, you know, at the start of the race, Kyle was thinking maybe I can go uh, two for two, but it just, it just wasn't meant to be. All in all, it was a decent race. Uh, there wasn't much uh, in the way of, you know, crashes or cautions or anything like that. It was just a good, solid, dominant win for Martin Truex Jr. But for me, the highlight of the race was probably Probably the uh, the paint jobs on the cars like I really really like the because uh, I think there were retro paint jobs paint schemes and there was one car in particular I think it was the um the Starcom team. So they had like a red and white colorway and that it just looked mean. It looked so, so, so nice to me. I think maybe because red and white are my favorite sporting colors because I support Arsenal Football Club and red and white are our colors there. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. They should definitely, I think, try and keep the retro colors. I know they won't, but I think it'd be really, really cool. But all in all, yeah, it was a good solid win for Martin Truex Jr. Well done, mate. Now this video, this reaction has been a long time coming and super high requested like ever since I reacted to uh, part one of this I wasn't even aware that it was really a part one I just thought that it was a standalone I thought that you know uh, that slap shoes had gone down to uh, to the to the area he'd done his research and he pretty much just concluded that you know this air based speedway pretty much either didn't really exist or you know it was just kind of a really murky situation but to figure out that you know to find out that there is an actual second part of this and he actually pieced it all together yeah people were just like in the comments like Kabir you've got to check out part two you've got to see the conclusion of this video it's crazy so I knew that I had to get to it today so let's go this is going to be me reacting to slap shoes finally discovering what the air base speedway is all about what happened to it let's do it Last time on this channel, we tracked down the mysterious Air Bay Speedway and went over what little information was easily accessible about mm -hmm. the track. Other than a couple of archived aerial photos and some newspaper clippings, I could hardly find anything mm. at all. So I put up a bounty for some more photos of the track and hoped you guys would come through for me, and man, you guys didn't disappoint <laughs> me one bit. That's awesome. The fact that he actually reached out to the, uh, to the community, to the NASCAR community, and we were, they were able to help him pretty much solve this is, is great. Great to see. I get a deluge of DMs on Twitter and Instagram with all sorts of photos, newspaper articles, and just simple messages wow. of support. Which was to be expected somewhat, but what I did not expect were the countless number of people hitting the books and doing tons of research oh, on my behalf. Awesome. Literally hundreds of people sent me every scrap of information they could find. To everybody who participated in this or just got the word out, thank you. I mean it. Thanks. 
This whole thing blew up to something way bigger than I ever thought possible, and it connected me with a lot of people who shed tons of new light on this long forgotten track. But where to start with all this new info? I guess we'll just go in chronological order of my discoveries like we did with the initial video, so here goes. Within five hours of going live, Justin Wynn, going by the handle of Zappomatic on Twitter, hit me up with this gem and claimed half the bounty right off the bat. He got hold of a promotional ad placed in the local newspaper that had a picture of Airbase Speedway right at wow. the top of the print. The ad was for one of the unsanctioned races held in April of 1951. I mean, how would you even begin to find news clippings that are, that are this old? Because this, this newspaper clipping that I'm looking at looks at least 25 years old. And obviously, I don't think that they uploaded these stories to the uh, internet back then. I don't think it existed. So, wow, crazy. And for an unsanctioned race, we got some pretty big names here. Buck Baker, Bob Flock, and NASCAR's very first champion, Red Byron. This shouldn't be too surprising though, considering that if you wanted to make a living racing stock cars back then, you basically had to hit up every single race you could possibly get to, whether it was sanctioned by NASCAR or not. Now I had asked for a ground level shot of the outside of the track, mostly because I thought this was going to be the only practical option. But this low flying aerial shot is wow. even better, and it is damn high quality too. I couldn't ask for a better shot even if I had traveled so back in time. that is it. This is the airbase speedway right here. Wow. Look at that. It doesn't, it looks like it's really in the middle of nowhere, like nothing around. But I imagine this is probably after it's been long time abandoned. I'm with a drone. This exceeded all of my expectations and cleared up a few assumptions I had made about the track from the high altitude aerials in the previous video. In turns one and two, I thought these were maybe billboards, but no. I think they just built wooden walls that high. You can see the light poles that they had placed all around the track so they could hold the many night races that they'd advertised. The grandstands at this track aren't like most grandstands at the time, where they would just build up a mound of dirt and lay down concrete right. steps. Instead, at airbase, they seem to have been built out of wood or maybe even steel which would explain why they weren't there in the 1964 aerial shots when it had been closed down. By then the stands had been torn down scrap. and sold for scrap. I think there's the flag stand in the infield at turn four of the quarter mile track, but I still don't see a ticket booth or any concession stands. This article though says there will be cold drinks and sandwiches for sale at the track. So I guess that we just have to go with what a lot of commenters suggested, saying that maybe they held all of these facilities underneath the grandstands. Wow. It's covered in shadow in this photo, so we'll just it's have possible. to guess at this point, unfortunately. This ad even tells us what they used to chemically treat the surface of the track with, some unknown calcium compound. After part one of the bounty had been claimed in a matter of hours, my hopes were high that part two, an action shot of the track, would come rolling in soon. However, I'd have to wait a while. In the meantime though, Adam Fenwick, news director of Speed Sport Magazine, reached out to me. An article in the January 2015 issue titled NASCAR's Forgotten Race might have a few clues about Airbase, and he told me they had digital copies of pretty much every issue ever wow. published, and said he'd go looking for it when he returned back to Honestly, work the next day. this is the power of numbers. You know, when people come, to come together, you know, anything is possible. Like, slap by himself, there's no way. I just don't think there's any way he could have done this. But the NASCAR community came through. It's, it's really, really great to see, honestly. I really like seeing stuff like this. Next day. Sure enough, Adam delivered. The article written by John Nelson and Tom Schmey gives the rundown of Airbase Speedway and confirms a lot of what we'd already speculated. They give a detailed account of the Grand National Race in August, talk about some other races held at the facility, and then mention something startling. NASCAR and everybody else up to this point in 2015 had erroneously credited Greenville Pickens Speedway as hosting this race. Tom Schmey reached out to me via email and told me the story. Jonathan Nelson had done most of the heavy lifting on this piece and came up to Tom one day in late 2014 and said he had found an error in NASCAR's record keeping. They researched a little further, but after the World of Outlaws finals in November of that year at Charlotte Motor Speedway, they decided to drive south to Greenville, South Carolina and check out the main library for more information. There they confirmed Jonathan's suspicions, published the article a couple of months later, and shortly thereafter, everyone, including NASCAR, changed their records and gave credit for the August 25th, 1951 Grand wow. National Race to Airbase Speedway. Wow, so even NASCAR themselves had it wrong. <laughs> you would think that that would be impossible, right? But. I guess everybody makes mistakes, eh? Thanks to the hard work of Tom Schmey and Jonathan Nelson, this one article is literally the only reason why we even know this track exists in the wow. first place. So why the confusion? Well, Greg Fielden's 40 years of stock car racing is the ultimate source on early NASCAR racing and is largely seen as the definitive be-all, end-all truth when it comes to NASCAR records wow. and history. He likely was just looking over his sources, saw Grand National Race Greenville, South Carolina, and just assumed, like so many other people, that it was Greenville Pickens Speedway. Another thing that they found in the article was the qualifying speed for the pole sitter, Jesse 
Jesse James Taylor, just shy of 53 miles an hour with a time of 31.06 seconds. That is horrendously yeah, slow, not that. just by today's... I was thinking that in touch, I just want to say, like, 53 miles an hour? Like, yeah. Maybe there was something wrong with his, with his engine or... Standards, but for the time as well. The culprit for these slow speeds? Bad track conditions. Uh, the article even found evidence of one unsanctioned race in May of 1950 being called off due to bad track conditions after just 15 laps, and Charlie Rush being declared the winner. Safe to say the track promoter Charlie Hicks was jumping into this whole stock car racing thing without having a clue about what he was doing. So much for his promo material touting the track as the South's fastest half mile. In the midst of the mad dash to find pictures of the Speedway, a few people sent me articles from local newspapers just hoping to help out, and inadvertently they gave me the story behind Airbase Speedway's demise. Charlie Hicks had apparently been trying to secure a loan for the Speedway under false pretenses. He said he owned the track fair and square with no issues. Problem was, however, that was a lie. He actually had a lien on his property. That means he couldn't sell or lease the property because the creditors had actual legal ownership of the track, probably due to unpaid bills. Charlie Hicks got fined $2,000 in September of 1951, which equates to nearly $20,000 in today's Ooh. money. That likely put Charlie Hicks under, and by the time 1952 rolled around, the track was no more likely liquidated by the people he owed money to. I had guessed that the track didn't even make it a decade and I was right. Airbase Speedway only existed from 1949 to 1952, wow, so any information years. on it is relegated to a very narrow window of time. To be quite honest, it's amazing we well, found anything years. at all, let alone such a crisp, low-flying aerial shot. But during everybody's haste to claim the bounty, I got a lot of photos that were definitely not of Airbase Speedway. <laughs> Whether these were honest mistakes or grifters just trying to get a quick 60 bucks, I'll leave up to the racing guys to decide. But after after a Jalopnik article picked up on my hunt for Airbase Speedway and added this photo for reference, everyone started sending me this pic saying they had found the action shot, even though this is clearly of the Daytona Beach circuit. I mean, hell, you can even see the paved section of Highway A1A right there in the shot. <laughs> this photo of Greenville picking Speedway from the late 1940s got passed around a lot too. I've attended literally hundreds of races at Greenville Pickens and I know the geography of the track like the back of my hand. This shot is taken from turn 3 looking at turns 1 and 2. Turns 1 and 2 have a hill behind them. The terrace of parked cars, probably the most famous aspect of Greenville Pickens Speedway, is visible in the shot too. And those reeds growing in the infield are from a creek that runs down the middle of the speedway. Mm. Today they've made a tunnel for the creek to cross under the track. But in time, the little creek became known as Blackwell's Lagoon, in reference to the Blackwell brothers who would go on to own it. A few shots of Weaverville Speedway got sent to me as man, well. Look at and these old cars, man. Just to have one of these in like mint condition. Honestly, you just you just don't see stuff like this anymore. Well, I don't. Now, honestly, I can't blame the people that did this. There's a flag stand in the infield, just like our low aerial shot, and in general, the whole track just looks really cheaply built. But the dirt mounds that act as the front stretch wall are nowhere to be found at airbase, so this is a no-go too. I did get some pictures that are all but impossible to verify, like this shot of Bob Flock in the pits with his number 7 car. He ran the number 7 at airbase, but then again he ran that number at a lot of races, so there's no way to know for sure. I also got this shot of a wrecker at a night race that somebody says they found in a photo album titled Airbase, but again there's no way to verify this. With so many erroneous pictures now flooding my DMs, I began to lose hope of finding the action shot Until. I was looking for. But Wednesday afternoon on September the 4th, Matthew Ludwigson sent me this pic via Getty Images. Now Getty Images states that this was a modified race held at Greenville Pickens Speedway in the 50s, but Matthew maintains that this is a shot of Airbase Speedway. The image is posted on Getty Images by ISC Images and Archives based out of Daytona, the same ISC that owns a good chunk of NASCAR's tracks today. The weird thing was, I had actually seen this picture before, but just took the description for granted. But upon further inspection, I think Matt might be right. There's a light pole right there, we know Airbase had lights mounted on the inside Honestly, of the track. these guys are like legit detectives. Like, they're piecing this together from information that is so obscure, like, he, like, Slap is able to know based on just this little fixture right here, he's able to, you know, ascertain that it is the uh, airbase speedway. You know, it's just, man, skills. Track, we know the track hosted modified stock car races fairly often, but the dead giveaway for me, the geography around the track. As stated before, Greenville Pickens has hills in turns one and two. So maybe this photo was taken towards turns three and four. Well, no way. 
There's a river that runs behind turns three and four, and you couldn't mount telephone poles back there. Plus, look at the infield. Greenville Pickens infield actually has a lot of rises and falls. It's far from flat. Turns three and four actually rise up quite a bit from the infield there. But this photo from the infield is perfectly flat. Not to mention the soil is different. Greenville Pickens is known for its red clay, but here we have a sandy lighter shade of soil that's usually indicative of the Piedmont area where oh, airbase is located. Also, take a look at the trees. Those are pine trees, and there aren't any pine trees near I Greenville mean Pickens. <laughs> This is just mad, crazy. The attention to detail is just very impressive. Speedway. This photo is beyond a shadow of a doubt not of Greenville Pickens Speedway. So why the error? The same reason why everybody misattributed Air Base as Greenville Pickens Speedway. It was in the Greenville area and record keepers saw Greenville in the title and just assumed it was Greenville Pickens, and not Greenville Textile Speedway, aka Air Base Speedway. Now who am I or anybody else to question Getty Images and ISC? Well, who was Jonathan Nelson to question all the record keepers in NASCAR itself? Big names have gotten the two mixed up before, and maybe when Nelson and Schmay's article dropped, Getty never got around to reviewing this image. So I'm calling it. This is an action shot, not of Greenville Pickens Speedway, but of Air Bay Speedway. We found the shot. Here it is. Now how much would it cost to buy this photo outright? Jesus, $500? Never mind. Someone else can claim that. You guys are just going to have to deal with the watermark for now. So how do we dole out the bounty? Well, I said they had to come as a package deal, but information was so scarce that that became unreasonable. I could split it 50-50, but that would be kind of sleazy, so I'm just going to give them the full bounty of 60 bucks. One of the winners actually declined the bounty and instead gave his winnings to Victory Junction. Nice. Good on him. And real talk for a second, I am absolutely amazed at the response to this little quest of mine. I honestly didn't think this video would take off the way that it did, and the bounty would just remain open forever. But here we are. I want to thank Justin Wynn and Matthew Ludwigson for all of their hard work and a special shout out to Adam Fenwick for sending me the article about the Speedway. Well and an even more special shout out to Tom Schmay and Jonathan Nelson for their diligent hard work. It's because of them that we even know of Air Base Speedway at all. So thanks guys. Thank you to everybody who participated in this crazy ride. But I'm still curious, is there anything left of the Speedway? Probably not. Can we see the remains of this long dead and nearly forgotten track? You know what? Pack your bags kids, it's time for a field trip. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. We ain't got time for permission slips from your parents. Let's go. <laughs> Just pack up your stuff and let's hit the road. We're doing this. We're doing it. It's time for a slap field trip. Slap on location. Man, that was awesome. Honestly, I, just, I love watching little sort of uh, detective type videos where they're trying to piece something together. They're trying to piece a, uh, you know, a hidden part of history or just something of interest together from really obscure, hard to find pieces of information. I've got to say, like I said it twice, I think in this video, uh, in the reaction, that the fact that people actually came through, dedicated their time for free pretty much. Obviously there was a, a small bounty, but one of the guys donated the bounty. You know, they actually gave their time up to help Slap with this uh, with this endeavor. Really, really is indicative of the, uh, of the NASCAR community. I'm really impressed by this because, you know, it's just this it would, for this question to go unanswered would have been such a shame you know but i'm happy that slap was able to actually find the conclusion to his question this this airbase did actually exist you know he did get to see an action shot of it and it'll be fun to see in the next uh, edition it, when he goes on location to see if he can actually find any remnants of the track itself i'll definitely have to react to that one but yeah this one was a ton of fun Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications and keep throwing the recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing the recommendations and I'll catch you in the next one.